Mishra, uh, senior partner, sales executive, uh, Microsoft Search Advertising with 19 years of work experience. She's worked for Alibaba, UC Browser, um, Yahoo India, Star News, Z Network, Indian Express, worked in the capacity of sales lead, agency relationship, brand manager, product manager, operations lead, system coordinator. My God, amazing. Um, she'll be speaking on the smile effect of technology. She's got a lovely smile and ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause as we go on for this fantastic session. Zoro Talia, come on everybody. Am I audible? Uh, thank you Mr. Khan for the lovely introduction. Uh, so, yes. So I think we have heard a lot about technology bashing already and about the level of personalization and uh, so essentially, but what we're really seeing is that technology bashing has become a good phenomena. We already feel, we are creeping about how mobile phones have become invasive, how digital assistants are listening to our conversations, how robots are going to take our lives. But I believe that it's actually the delicate dance between the technology and the human, which is actually going to kind of help us unravel a lot of solutions. And I will start my uh, presentation with a small video of a nine-year-old kid and his love for video game. I think it has already been played by Mr. Ramamurthy earlier than me, but uh, I mean, let's just kind of see it for the, for the sake of its value. It's really beautiful. My name is Grover. Sean. My name is Ian. I'm Taylor. My name is Owen, and I am nine and a half years old. I only have one. <laughs> and yeah. I love video games, my friends, my family, and again video games. Whenever I play it, it makes me feel happy. The fun that you get to have with connecting with your friends. You make your own rules. It's his way of interacting with his friends when he can't physically otherwise do it. When I'm playing with a regular controller, there's some things that don't work for me. It's difficult for me to use both joysticks and the D-pad at the exact same time. And it just slowed me down a bunch more while other people were like oh, do, 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 do. She's never had the freedom to play at the level she knows she could. I never thought it was unfair. I just thought, hey, this is the way it is and it's not gonna change. What I like about the adaptive controller is that now everyone can play. I don't even have to look at the controller and just be like looking at the screen like, hey, yep, yep. You never want your kid to feel like an outsider or an other. One of the biggest fears early on is, how will Owen be viewed by the other kids? <laughs> He's not different when he plays. It's a little challenging, but that's the whole point of gaming. I can hit the buttons just as fast as they can. And I think I can crush my friends. <laughs> no matter how your body is or how fast you are, you can play. It's a really good thing to have in this world. I think the expression on the parents' uh, face is absolutely priceless. Uh, so I will, uh, this is basically, I'm going to talk about, take a leaf from one of the a conference is where Asiyo Satya Nadella was talking to a lot of developers and he was actually talking to these developers about what the possibilities AIs could bring for a lot of clients and consumers and I will quote his words, we have the responsibility to ensure that these technologies are empowering everyone. These technologies are creating equitable growth by ensuring that every industry is able to grow and create employment. But we also have a responsibility as a tech industry to build trust in technology. And I think this word stands really tall today in today's time because we see so many stories about data leakages. Companies are being so cagey about wanting to share the data because they fear it will be a breach. So you know what, this is, this is where I think the opportunity for uh, tech giants to kind of take the guardianship of uh, the whole uh, and build that trust. And I think one of the word which kind of goes around in the inside Microsoft is that the Microsoft runs on trust. Okay. 
coming back to this is one of the very big uh, comprehensive program which Microsoft has undertaken. It's actually called AI for Earth. The whole idea of AI for Earth is essentially to talk about you know how AI could solve solutions you know which our planet is facing today. It could be regarding your uh, soil cultivation, water crisis, agriculture crisis, biodiversity issues. And one such uh, in the, the Bill 2018 conference that happened in Seattle, uh, they are in fact kind of added another leg to it and that's called AI for accessibility. And I think we heard a little bit about in the earlier sessions as well. But what exactly this is, is a 25 million five year program for AI tools to be put in the hands of developers to see what they can work with it and kind of make a solution. And uh, potentially this uh, uh, tool is supposed to kind of you know uh, benefit 1 billion plus people with disability around the world. I will pause here and I will ask you people to take a guess that from this potential 1 billion plus people, what do you think is the percentage of people who actually get any kind of assistive technology which helps them live a little bit of a normal life? Do you want to take a guess? Any response? 1 percent? Anybody else? What is it? Well, I think it's between, I think it's about 10 percent. And it's largely, I think, it's, you know, you could center to the developed countries. So I think we really have a far way to go. Uh, basic, what it basically means is you're working on stronger solutions like real-time speech-to-text transcription, but, uh, visual recognition services, predictive text functionality, enormous potential for people enabling uh, them uh, like who have problem with vision, hearing, cognitive, learning, mobility, disabilities, and mental health conditions. What we're trying to do here is actually kind of solve three specific scenario to make these people employable, to have them like uh, you know kind of adapt to the modern life and the most important to make human connections. And let's hear from uh, Shakib Sheikh and a day in his life. I'm Shakib Sheikh. I lost my sight when I was seven. And shortly after that, I went to a school for the blind. And that's where I was introduced to talking computers. And that really opened up a whole new world of opportunities. I joined Microsoft 10 years ago as a software engineer. I love making things which improve people's lives. And one of the things I've always dreamt of since I was at university was this idea of something that could tell you at any moment what's going on around you. I think it's a man jumping in the air doing a trick on a skateboard. I teamed up with like-minded engineers to make an app which lets you know who and what is around you. It's based on top of the Microsoft Intelligence APIs, which makes it so much easier to make this kind of thing. The app runs on smartphones, but also on the pivot head smart glasses. When you're talking to a bigger group, sometimes you can talk and talk and there's no response and you think, is everyone listening really well, or are they half asleep? And you never know. I see two faces, 40-year-old man with a beard looking surprised, 20-year-old woman looking happy. The app can describe the general age and gender of the people around me and what their emotions are, which is incredible. One of the things that's most useful about the app is the ability to read out text. Hello, good afternoon. Here's your menu. Great, thank you. I can use the app on my phone to take a picture of the menu and it's going to guide me on how to take that correct photo. Move camera to the bottom right and away from the document. And then it'll recognize the text. Read me the headings. I see appetizers, salads, paninis, pizzas, pastas. Hi. Years ago, this was science fiction. I never thought it would be something that you could actually do. But artificial intelligence is improving at an ever faster rate. And I'm really excited to see where we can take this. Hey. As engineers, we're always standing on the shoulders of giants, building on top of what went before. And in this case, we've taken years of research from Microsoft Research to pull this off. I think it's a young girl throwing an orange frisbee in the park. For me, it's about taking that far off dream and building it one step at a time. I think this is just the beginning. Thanks. So one of the things which is very popular with tech industries and uh, is the uh, hackathons that they do. I'm sure people who work with technology companies, they are aware about 
what hackathons, uh, what happens there. Basically, you get a lot of developers to kind of work on a lot of ideas and see if something could be scalable. One such hackathon project was done, which is a three-year project, and that became a solution and used by millions of teachers and students worldwide. The people who created it, they were even surprised by the magnitude. They thought it will be big, but they never thought it will be so big. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a story about a teacher. She, is a, she was a fourth grade teacher in Washington teaching uh, kids with uh, basically who have learning disability called dyslexia and dysgraphia. Dysgraphia is actually a disability where you can't write properly. I, that's what I understand. And basically, you know, she, what she would do every weekend, she would actually kind of, you know, spend multiple hours just recording text for her classroom to read the, over the period of the week next, next week. It was very time consuming and kind of limiting in its potential. Then she heard about Surface Pro Laptop and it comes with a learning tool called Immersive Reader and it's a very beautiful tool. What it really does is it actually uh, is helped to, uh, created to help people improve reading and writing, especially for people with learning disorders. It allows content to be read aloud, break it into word syllables, highlight parts of speech. Now, if you're trying to actually teach a kid, okay, just in terms of grammar wise, or do you, nouns or the adjectives, you can actually highlight those parts and read it. I mean, people like us could use it in a normal life where it's very difficult to read small text and you basically just kind of touch and kind of make it big. You can basically de-space the crowding of the word. Those are the beautiful things that you can do with Immersive Reader. But the impact of this particular tool was so huge that uh, 13 million people are currently using this tool, about 40 languages around the world. And uh, the, the, basically the feedback of this teacher was that when her start class started to use this, for about three weeks, she started to see the change uh, in their behavior. They were able to be more, they were more fluent in the English. They were able to catch on more understanding of the language. And you know, she said that, you know what, I do see th things changing and it's definitely making a difference. Okay. Few years back, farmers in US added a new crop to their bounty, which is called knowledge. What they did was, they actually started working with drones and intelligent edge. And uh, this is just another fact. Uh, by year 2050, the current world population of 7.6 billion is expected to reach 9.8 billion. And at this point of time, I think a lot of people have to start thinking about food production. A lot of governments are going to think about it, uh, how to increase it dramatically to keep up with this growth. There's limited arable lands and water levels are going down. And with the planning that we have, we are actually only able to think about how to basically feed them. It's not even gone to the level of nourishing them. It's just like a really basic level. So Microsoft Farm Beat program actually is one such program. What it does, it sends, it sends large amount of data from ground-based sensors, tractors, and cameras to the computer. Uh, sensors help track moisture and soil data. You're essentially using this drone and intelligent edge data uh, basically to kind of understand, you know, what kind of uh, work we can do, how can you increase the yield of your uh, farm. And the objective is generate actionable insights for the farmer. And let me uh, kind of run a really nice video on this one. More than three quarters of the poor people in the world are farmers. They're faced with a very tough problem. They have to grow enough food to feed their family every year. When you think of digital technology, you don't think of measuring soil moisture. You don't think about helping people know when to plant or understand what's going wrong on their farm. But if we can make these sensors small enough, cheap enough, then the chance to get this down to more and more farmers, get them additional productivity, it's pretty exciting. We're taking this data and we built machine learning and AI models to do two things. One is virtual sensor prediction. So we're predicting things like leaf wetness, evapotranspiration, and solar radiation. We use the data to customize the model for the farm, and we're getting very accurate results for each one of those. These sensors use a new type of connectivity that's very inexpensive called TV white spaces. TV white space is unused bandwidth in between the TV broadcast channels. Governments are now allowing this bandwidth to be used to transmit data. In this case, it's the data coming from the field that goes back to the computers that helps create the best advice to the farmer. What you're seeing here is a TV white spaces router. This is like your Wi-Fi antenna at home, powering all of this through solar panels. You just power this on and you get Wi-Fi on demand in the farm. We use it to send drone imagery. 
Once the flight is complete, it will start transmitting the data over the white spaces to do precision map generation. Whoa! Oh, okay. You can bring it back. Yeah, I'm bringing it back. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting the leaves. Any data you can get to farmers can make a huge difference. The weather is always highly variable. Deciding should they invest in fertilizer, when do they plant, understanding which crop would be the right one at this time. Even 20% more productivity means that they can afford school fees, save a little bit for a tough year. You know, climate change is going to make the farmer's job a lot harder. And just closing that yield gap, even a modest amount, would make a huge difference for all those farmers. So before I go on, one of the interesting facts is that one was Ranbir Chandra, who is the chief scientist, he actually hails from a small village in Bihar. And I really hope that someday, you know, we really kind of see the, the true beauty of this entire effort that we are able to kind of bring it to even those smaller in places in India as well. Okay. Now, a lot of people in the room must be wondering why am I showing a Bing uh, slide over here. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot to do with Microsoft and what Bing and what the relation is. That if you understand anything about AI, it's actually a, a large amount of data sets over a large period of time it was actually gets baked into the artificial intelligence. And that is what Bing did for and does for uh, Microsoft AI intelligence. It's actually the tool which makes Microsoft so competitive today. It's kind of a mouthpiece and all the data that comes from Bing is kind of what's baked into the AI today. Just for people who love some facts, uh, this is the uh, Bing PC market share. So currently we are about 10% market share worldwide. Our biggest market is United States, which is 35% market share, uh, followed by UK, which is about 21%. Uh, at, and uh, we are about 8% uh, PC market share in India. Okay, these are some facts you, you don't know about Bing, and I would love to uh, kind of share. So Bing is celebrating 10 years of uh, its existence. Uh, I'm proud to say that for the last 100 months, consecutive months, we have been consistently uh, growing in market share. We have doubled the search of market share in PC since launch. If Bing were to be an independent company, it would today stand as a Fortune 400 company. And currently, we service about 500K advertisers globally. This is my last slide. Uh, I'm just quoting the words of our executive VP and uh, our president. Ultimately, the question is not only what computers can do, it's what computers should do. And what I really mean is that, you know, I mean, we always see this danger and at some point of time, technology will take over our lives. And actually, that's not, that's not true. It is people, us, sitting in this room who have to be the guardians of the galaxy and kind of ensure that we do this delicate dance and not let technology power us, but actually use it so that it kind of, you know, we all continue to have the smiling effect of technology. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, ma'am. And uh, we've got a token of appreciation from uh, Mr. Rishi Sharma, Grassim Industries. Can have you on the stage uh, to present a token of appreciation. Thank you. Thank you for this very exciting session. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, sir, we request you to kindly come on the stage and present a token of appreciation. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause. Ms. Reena Mishra.